say your prayers, little rat. But first, a message from our sponsor. I've been spending a lot of time at home lately, and it's given me a chance to play more video games. What games am I playing? Raid! Shadow Legends! Have you heard of it? Use my links below to download Raid yourself to your mobile device or PC. Raid Shadow Legends is an exciting game that will take you to a world of dark fantasy and realism. It has an old school RPG feel and is loaded with awesome champions. Here, let's check out some of the champions I use regularly. We got Aethel from the Sacred Order. She's a total badass with Captain Marvel's hair, but without any of her cringe dialogue. I'm playing it all the time. I'm leveling up champions in the tavern when I'm working out. I'm battling clan bosses while I'm walking in the park. I'm fighting other players in the PvP arena when I'm eating dinner. There's tournaments happening all the time, like the one right now where you get points for fighting a dragon. And there's a brand new arena tournament happening this month. You can find me in the game under Hack the Movies. Use our link in the description, and if you're a new player, you will get an exclusive welcome pack that contains 100,000 silver and a free epic champion, Yotan. I'm pretty sure this is the Chad version of Kieran. This offer is only available for the next 30 days, right there in your inbox. So go here and claim it and become a Shadow Legend today. So today we're talking about the movie Dennis the Menace from 93. It was 93, right? Yeah, 1993. Okay. Now, before we even talk about this, there's just something I can't get over. Is that how was there two Dennis the Menace comic strips that both like, debuted the same day. The the one I think I think it was uh, the Dennis the Menace in the UK was scheduled to come out on the week after, but it was released in newsstands the same exact day that the American Dennis the Menace was released uh, in newsstands in America. Yeah. So I mean, I I didn't read a lot of the comic strip, but I saw the uh, the sitcom. I saw a lot of that because I used to replay all that you know those old shows on TV more often uh, back then. Yeah, Nickelodeon used to show it constantly. Oh yeah, like Nick was it was it a Nick at Night show or uh, they showed it during the day when I was a kid. They showed it with Lassie and Flipper. Oh yeah, I remember those too, yeah. Like yeah. I used to watch it every single day cuz it was just on during the day all the time. Um so the cartoon was really like that that was my Dennis the Menace. And then we get to the movie. So, what do you think? I love the movie. Uh and I I think the 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 cartoon is really what they base the movie on more than more so than the uh, the fifties uh, thing. Even though th the movie has a lot of like fifties actors and and people who were like character actors in the sixties and uh, the, there's um there's the one guy the one guy that really comes to mind is there's a, a photographer character and he is Arnold when Stang. you hear his voice he's in yeah he's in like a lot of stuff he's in my favorite uh, movie it's a mad 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 world. Um, exactly. And when I saw him in this, watching it a, a second time now, that blew my mind. I was like, oh, holy shit. An Arnold Stang cameo. Yeah. And it, this, just to think that this was in the 90s, like this was when I was alive. Like I, I saw Dennis the Menace in the theater and at that time didn't put two and two together. I didn't recognize like, oh, that's Arnold Stang. It just, but now seeing it, I'm like, wow, he looks exactly the same pretty much. Yeah. I didn't see this in theater. I uh, This was bought for me on VHS after it came out. And I'm about the same age as Dennis was, is, I guess. Well, at the time, I was the same age. Uh, he was born in 1986. And uh, I... I remember thinking Dennis was hilarious as a kid, and I still think as an adult he's he's pretty funny. He never comes off as annoying. I think he's actually like, he's to be honest, all the kid actors in this movie are top notch. They're all really funny. Their line delivery is great. Their acting's great. But Walter Matthau uh, had me cracking up every line. He's so funny in this movie. Well, think how disappointed he's going to be when he gets home. Well, he better get used to it. Disappointment's going to be a big part of his life. He's a foot short for his age, and he's cross-eyed. Yeah, I remember him from uh, Grumpy Old Men. I saw that right. one in the theater. There's, there's a lot of good actors in this movie. There's uh, Christopher Lloyd. 
Oh yeah, and who is also great in this movie? Yeah, Switchblade Sam. So Switchblade he, Sam, yeah. Yeah, so he plays this really exaggerated criminal where he's yeah. just like walking around in plain sight, just like in broad daylight, and he's just like covered in like black soot. Yeah, he's like, really gross. <laughs> yeah. And like the kids, there's a scene that sticks out when the kid's eating the apple, and then he's like, like leaning on the fence, and he's like talking to the kid. I'm like, that is just, like, it's so uh, blatantly creepy um, yeah. that there would never be a, like a criminal just walking around like so um, obvious like that. But it, but it's funny. That's what's so funny about it. Because he isn't ta like, there's nothing that he's like doing super. Like he steals the kid's apple. He stabs the apple too. That's that was what scared the shit out of me as a kid. When he eats the apple with the knife, um, I think that's where I I got like a. Um, I mean, like, like a fear almost of eating food with a knife because I'm just, I look at that, I'm like, oh God, like don't put a knife anywhere near your mouth. And and now whenever I like, you know, like I, I, I'm very much just avoid ever um, trying to eat food, you know, with a knife or anything, which yeah. I guess is something you normally wouldn't do. But, um, you know, in some cultures, it's very common to eat with a knife. So um, I've always kind of been uh, hes hesitant or like kind of scared of that. I think it's because of this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even though nothing happens yeah, to him, but it's just the way he's like, know. he's grinning while he's doing it and his face is all dirty. And it's like, oh, like Switchblade Sam, like I just got him in my mind all the time. And as a kid too, I never put it together. I didn't realize it was uh, Christopher Lloyd until later. Like when I got older and I understood, because when this movie came out in 93, I was, uh, I was like six. Or, or something like that. I, I was like six or seven at, when I finally saw it. So I never put together that he was Doc Brown. Yeah, I didn't either. I, I, you know, that's something as an adult, now I'm able to, I keep noticing more movies that had Christopher Lloyd in them. You know, it's kind of funny too, uh, mentioning uh, Doc Brown, Leah Thompson's in this movie and she's Marty's mom. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you have, you have two Back to the Future actors in this, I guess. That's right, yeah. The craziest thing, I think, is that uh, um, Nick Castle directed it. And yeah. So, Michael Myers directed <laughs> the Dennis the Menace movie. Or The Shape. The Shape, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I didn't know he directed much. He wrote some movies. I think he wrote um, like Escape from New York, So yeah, which was Carpenter I, um, directed. I didn't know who it was. Uh, I was watching this with Justin, uh, and he was the one who told me you know, uh, who Nick Castle was. And uh, that I was just, it's so weird, I guess, like how Hollywood works and how people end up becoming, you know, uh, these people who, who you don't even know are just, you know, Michael Myers, the guy who's the original Michael Myers and was also in uh, the newest one. He played Michael Myers, I guess, to some capacity. I don't think he was in every single scene, but... He was in like one shot where he's in the window. Um, okay. I think it's the shot when she first sees him. He also directed The Last Starfighter. Oh, um, wow. I, I just confirmed it. Uh, it says on the back, um, there, there he is, directed by Nick Castle. Uh, yeah. John Hughes was the, the writer-producer of, uh, you know, he did Home Alone. You know, in the early 90s, like right after Home Alone, there was always all these movies about kids who were like the main character, especially like a blonde-haired kid um, yeah. who fights a criminal because he does, he, he basically... He's the one who like beats up Switchblade Sam at the end, even though it's like yeah. accidentally. But um, where he just—I I love those scenes. All the all the slapstick done is is done so well, and it is that it, it, you know the way they do in um, in in Home Alone, where where everything's just so over the top, and it's horribly violent, but it's so cartoony that it just works really well. Yeah, like Christopher Lloyd is good at playing like about acting like pain like yeah. whenever it's like ah oh! it just like gets so crazy in his face say your prayers little rat But yeah, uh, Mason Gamble is the name of the kid. And uh, in Spy Hard, he played a kid who was left home alone named McClucky. 
Oh, McClucky. So it has a pretty stellar lineup. I mean, I don't think it's anywhere near the level of Home Alone, but it's it's still a you know it was a, it was a fun movie when it came out. You know, it's, I think it it holds up too to this day. Watching it, um, I I have not seen this movie since I was a kid before I watched it for this. I, I the last time I probably watched it, I had I was probably six or you know I was seven or eight. I guess I don't know, but. Uh, this movie still to this day made me laugh as hard as I, and it probably laughed harder now uh, that I got certain jokes that I didn't get as a kid. When I, you know, when you're able to see um, the the two layers of like the kid jokes and the adult jokes, and uh, and understand it way more than I did when I was uh, when I was seven. This movie is still a really funny movie that I think anybody could really watch and still have, and it's a good movie that like to show your kids now. Like if you have kids, this is something that you can sit them in front of and they'll be dying laughing, I think. There's a couple things that like they mention, but it's not anything that I think a kid would pick up on. Yeah, and like the violence is pretty slapsticky. It's not very, yeah. you know, it's not realistic. Which actually I think is my only real complaint with it is that um, I wish it had better slapstick. I mean, the the, the good stuff is when he's with Switchblade Sam at the end, yeah. um, but it's the things he does to Mr. Wilson, because that was like the main gag of going into it and knowing who Dennis the Menace is. It's basically like all the stuff he does to Mr. Wilson that he does like by accident. Yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, the, the teeth part, which I, I love the teeth with the chiclets. I love the uh, the scene with the uh, with the nasal spray, and he uh, he puts soap all over the floor by accident, and then he he sprays all the nasal spray, replaces it with mouthwash, and then replaces the mouthwash with like floor cleaner or something. <laughs> so, so you get that like one two three of uh, of Mr. Wilson walking in doing a full split, going to put his nasal spray in, and it's it's. It's mouth or it's mouthwash, so he's just screaming and everything. <laughs> Walter Matthau, the close-ups that they get and his face, and his delivery of lines and um, just the things he says, where he he holds himself so highly, like when he's talking to when he's talking to Mitchell, uh, the dad in the beginning of the movie in the parking or in the uh, the driveway, and he's like, you know, Mitchell, when I was a kid. I didn't, but and and he's like, yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. Like, he just wants to leave. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, he's definitely the right um, choice for the role of Mr. Wilson. Like, he fits the character, but um, it's like I wish the slapstick with Mr. Wilson was a little better because the things that Dennis does to him, some of them are kind of lame. Like the flower blooming, I just thought was kind of lackluster. Like, yeah. there's a flower that um, Mr. Wilson has that blooms only once in like a hundred years or something and it happens yeah. for like a second under the, the full moon or something and then it withers away so you get like one chance to look at it and then dennis just like distracts him and it's something really quick and then he turns and then it blooms and then he looks back and it's gone already and i'm just like that's just lame i mean they could have came up with something you know yeah. better than that I think that one is just like kind of supposed to be like the last straw. It's what kind of it sets in in motion the the uh, the climax of now Mr. Wilson and his redemption arc in a way, you know. Yeah, because you saw all the stuff he did to him, like in the the sitcom and the cartoon. And you're like, well, this has got to be like the ultimate thing he does. Like he need, he needs to like destroy his house or something, yeah. and it doesn't happen. It's like nothing much. They could have definitely went for it. I love the cakes and everything where he hits the garage door and it just knocks everything over. And they go to him and he's like, I made a mistake. <laughs> well, I, I forgot. Yeah, when garage doors used to like bend up. I don't know. Do, yeah. they, do they still have those? I don't know. I, I think that honestly, like, uh, I don't know. Watching it nowadays, like I, I it, it, it was kind of coming back to me and like. Uh, this movie's really funny. It's just, uh, it's it's a well done, '90s you know funny movie. Kids can watch. Uh, your parents can watch it with you, and they'll still get a good laugh, I guess. It, it's not bad. I mean, I think you probably like it more than I do, but it's it's still it's it's pretty good. I think this was it, it was it was a movie for like because uh, you, you know you're you're a little bit older than I am. So when this movie came out, I was Dennis's age. So for me, it was, uh, I guess that's why I, I kind of have more, you know, fond memories of it because I kind of, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it, it, the, the, uh, the humor was, uh, 
I just I just loved the movie. I watched it a lot as a kid. When we first when we first got it on tape, uh, I watched this movie like I don't even know how many times. I I mean because you know that's what you did. You didn't really like. You watched the same movie all, all the time as a kid, I guess. And yeah, that's I, like that's if you own the tape or something, that's like, well, yeah. there you go. You know, you got those tapes. So you, you kind of go in a rotation with, with a lot of the same movies. It's weird, too, because when you think about it, like, you know, nowadays a VHS, you can go and get it for a dollar at a thrift store. But this movie, when it came out, was probably like $20 on tape. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot like like video games. Like I only owned a hand, handful, but would rent them usually. Pretty much said everything we wanted to. Um, the only thing I was wondering, I think there were some sequels to this. Do you know anything yeah. about those? I don't know. Like, um, I never saw any of the sequels. I, movies like this, when they make a sequel, I'm always just like, why? Oh, what the? Oh, hey guys. Oh, Justin. Hey, what's what's up? I knew you guys were talking about Dennis the Menace, so I wanted to come talk about the sequel, Dennis the Menace Strikes Back from 1998. It stars Don Rickles and Betty White, so that's pretty good casting. So there's three plots in this movie. There's an A plot, a B plot, and a C plot. Uh, the A plot, Mr. Wilson's trying to become immortal, basically, cheating death. There's an anti-aging scam going on. There's a scene where Carrot Top wears brown face because he's pretending to be an Indian guy. Uh, the B-plot, Dennis's grandfather moves in, who's also a menace. And there's kind of a competition for Dennis's affection between the grandfather and Mr. Wilson. And the grandfather's played by the, uh, like, the captain guy from Naked Gun. The third plot involves Margaret trying to get into the boys' club or trying to get Dennis out of it. But there's a girl in the boys' club who's like a tomboy, and she's some spy kid. So that's interesting, I guess. There's also a car wash debacle at the end where uh, Dennis puts cotton candy into a car wash machine that blows up everywhere and puts pink goo all over the neighborhood. It's kind of weird. So I have the uh, VHS tape here, and there's Don Rickles and Betty White. Um, and as you can see, Dennis rides in like uh, Miley Cyrus on a wrecking ball. That never happens in the movie, especially with the dog on it. So that's bullshit. It's kind of more faithful to the comics because at least it shows the comic strips in the beginning. It's not bad. Oh, and the mom, uh, she looks like Dennis's mom. She's the uh, Susan from Seinfeld. I know Tony will like that. And the last thing about the movie that's weird is the editing's kind of weird. It has like a YouTube poop kind of thing where it just keeps doing jarring editing. I don't know what's up with that. But all right, guys, enjoy talking about your movie. All right, bye, Justin. Be careful.